I'm Rob LaCuria, Senior Editor at Gold Derby, and I'm here with the one and only William Zabka, who was a star and producer on Netflix's phenomenon, Cobra Kai. Now, William, when we last spoke, you declared that Johnny Lawrence is a work in progress. And I think that's still true to this day. But over the fourth season, I felt like he had the most personal growth. And I really was rooting for him. Like, this is a guy that I bloody hated when I was a kid. And now I, I love him. I, I really do. I really care about the guy. What do you most love about Johnny's story over season four? Well, it's a great question. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> he's definitely a work in progress still. But the end of season three, Johnny and Daniel bow to each other. We have this kind of climactic moment, epiphany of the two of them coming together. And uh, they're both eager to go down, you know, and train these kids. And they bump heads. And there's these, this minefield between these two characters and this so all the stuff that Johnny hasn't worked out in him and Daniel hasn't worked out in himself. Then they come, they collide. So they kind of, they separate at episode five with the, with their rematch. Um, and uh, Johnny goes, they both go on their own journeys inside and they basically end up at the end of season four when Daniel comes to Johnny and invites him to help be on his, uh, you know, Miyagi Do team and help take down Cobra Kai. And he confesses to Johnny how he felt and Johnny has that moment back. And I think that's the moment that's earned over the season of, what was at the end of season three, where they bowed to each other, just kind of, um, you know, just in the emotion in the moment. But now they've both gone on a journey to earn that moment. So they did both grow. And then, of course, for Johnny, especially what I love the most about it is, I mean, Johnny's heart in the whole show is is his son. It's his son, Robbie. That's the that's the empty piece that that's got away. And he's trying to figure out he's trying to put this jigsaw puzzle of his life together. Um, to get that kid back in, to make it amend somehow. In the meantime, he's found, found Miguel, who he's become a father figure to, and he's in love with this kid too. Um, so these kids are what he's about. And he doesn't know what Johnny has that moment in the se in this season where he's drunk and he says, I love you, Robbie, oh, no. which was super painful to, to read, really painful to read and, and even more painful to play. Um, the tears were real, I think, for both Sholo and I. I mean, we both, we grew so much over these seasons to, and to read that there's this moment of disconnect that was that brutal, um, you know, it was very painful. Um, and then at the end, though, he earns, uh, Johnny earns Robbie back for a moment and they have that brand new start, that one piece. So at the end of season four, Johnny's kind of got everything he's ever really wanted and that's his son. And, um, you know, even though he lost the tournament and he's got his respect for Daniel and Daniel's respect for him. Um, so you're right. So it's a, it's a lot of growth that happens over the season, which is a great, a great journey for the character to play. And the writers just map that out so wonderfully for me. You know, I'm glad you said that, William, because I feel like Johnny won this season. He won because he gets what he's always wanted. In fact, I said this to the showrunners and also to Ralph uh, not long ago that there's a few narrative arcs throughout the season that I really, really responded to. But the number one was, was about fatherhood, probably because I am a father, I have a father, you know, so we all can key into that emotion. Yeah. A yeah. lot of it has to do with Johnny because Johnny and Miguel have absent fathers. Johnny and Miguel have that heart to heart. And I, oh, I want to talk about the scene in a second. And then Johnny and Robbie at the end, you get to do so much stretching as an actor with this guy. There's a lot of tears. That scene where Johnny's drunk, and says, I love you, Robbie. And then Miguel's just standing there with tears in his eyes. That yeah. broke me. That was really, really hard to watch. Talk, talk me through that day on the set. You say the tears were real. Yeah, I think so. I mean, that, that moment was, was an organic moment for us. And we didn't pl plan it either way. I was trying to remember the words to the song and, and, and you know, get myself into a drunken state. Um, I knew that line was coming. I didn't know how it was going to play until it played, until Shola was standing there playing Miguel and we had this connection. And uh, yeah, it was it was super painful. It's almost like Johnny's aware somehow that it's Miguel, but in that moment, his his brokenness is projecting that he wishes this was Robbie. And so it was, um, yeah, it was uh, it was a tough scene to play. And it was, you know, in those scenes, you kind of wish, yeah, man, you know, we're going to we're going to break the audience's heart here. You know, we're we're going to we're going to lose ground on the progress these characters have made. We're resetting it. Um, but life is that way, you know, and, you, you know, one one word, one slip, one thing, it can send you in a different trajectory. And that's what happens. And now Miguel's off, um, you know, at the end of the season on his own journey, looking for his father. But you're right. It's all about fatherhood. I mean, I have kids. 
I have a, a godson who I raised from time he was <laughs> before he was born until now he's 30. And um, I know the, 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 the stuff he's been through in his life with an absentee dad and me filling in um, and the brokenness, the emptiness and trying to find your complete self, just trying to find yourself. And that's what all these characters are doing in the whole show, besides Johnny, Daniel, too, and his, his relationship with his son and trying to get his foot forward and, and work things out for the first time and, uh, and how that goes. So I think that's why the show is so relatable and why people are connecting with it. Sure, it's got the karate. It's got the nostalgia. It's got everything we love. It's got these characters we're familiar with. But it's tapping into the human condition in a really genuine way that's that's beneath all of that. That's the the river that's flowing underneath it all. And I think everybody's kind of connecting and hanging on to uh, different characters and relating to that and going on this this kind of ride, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm always surprised by the show because I I get so caught up in the action and it's so funny and it can be so silly and comical and um, even outrageous when it comes to Chris and, and Terry and you know all that side of the story. And then it just hits you in the gut for things that really matter. And yeah. I just I just find, I just think the writing is just so spot on. It's brilliant. Um, but I do want to talk about some of the funny stuff because I think a lot of Johnny is the more the funnier side for example i love it how he makes this mexican dinner off a chili's website to be authentic for his ecuadorian girlfriend and mother but he's a good guy he has so much heart and he's so endearingly naive as well there's an innocence to him isn't there yes oh yeah absolutely you know, I think, you know, he's, the way he approaches things is with the limited knowledge that he has and his l- limited toolbox. He, I always say Johnny has a super small toolbox that he's building out from the beginning of season one. Um, but, uh, you know, he's he may not be politically correct. He may do the wrong things, say the wrong things, but his heart's on his sleeve. And what's coming out of his mouth isn't necessarily what's in his heart. And I think there's something to observe there, you know, and that. Uh, so yeah, so uh, I love I love that I, lo- I laughed my ass off when I read uh, the Chili's the Chili's bit and he's trying to fit in he's doing his best you know there's one scene I think in episode two or three with with Crease where he says um, you know Sholo or, or Miguel's Mexican he says no he's from Ecuador you know and so he's learning he's picking up these little nuggets along the way and he's growing he's evolving um, you know the caveman in many ways being acclimated to this world today. And that's just that alone is an exciting thing to play. Somebody that's blind, you know, somebody who has a, there's a blindness, but there's an openness and a willingness to change, to learn, to grow. Um, yeah. Not stuck. Yeah. He's not stuck. And that's a really interesting and nuanced place to inhabit for a character. Yeah. Because look, to be honest, here's another example. Episode five. I'm just come off the top of my head. We get that great montage of Johnny being an asshole to people while he breaks concrete blocks and <laughs> there's an eagle flying overhead. Like it's so ridiculous, but yeah. there's that still that rebellious spirit that we expect from him. He gets drunk. He's a lover. He's a fighter. I actually find that slightly aspirational. I want to be more like that. I wish I could yeah. be more like that. Do you? Feel yeah, so- I do. I do. I do. I mean, I I think people mistake me for Johnny a lot, and uh, the- <laughs> <laughs> Billy Zapka, William Zapka. Um, yeah, I think, you know, there's, there's a toughness. There's a, there's a, there's a, uh, he's got thick skin, you know, but a tender heart, um, you know, and he's, uh, and he's old school. And there's something fun about looking at old school or something good about listening to old records and old, you know, seeing what they lived like back to how he's being. You can never do that today. You can't go run and kick a ball from a kid on a beach <laughs> and break somebody's scooter. And, you know, and punch finished. Yeah, it's yeah, like, canceled. So, but, he, but, he, but he has license to do that because we know him. And, we, and that's really a testimony to the writers and that the way that they're delivering and serving him up. Because on one hand, you have this kind of comedic absurdity. And then the other hand, you have this immense heart and drama and it's balanced so well and that's why as an actor it's just so refreshing to trust that to know i'm in the best hands and that i can go 100 percent in this direction 100 percent in that direction they're going to put it together and it's going to become this round um, yeah this round exactly pick. and yeah. that round thing is that yin and yang that you and ralph play together with the two um you know johnny and daniel and how they're so different and they're opposites and yet they're stronger together and that's what the show keeps reminding us about the, the beginning of the um season you know, Daniel is revving up the team with words of inspiration. Johnny says, we'll kick their ass until they shit themselves. Like, but they both, they're both very effective. And yeah. in terms of inspiring a team, they're stronger that way. And I think that connection that you and Ralph are able to portray on screen is, to me, feels very organic. What are your thoughts on the way you and Ralph are able to spar off each other, both 
uh, physically and also emotionally. Yeah, well, we've done this for a minute together, so we we yeah. know how we know how this feels. We know what it looks like to look in each other's eyes, and we trust each other. Um, and so, you know, I know when to give him the rope, and he knows when to give me the rope. And we know when to yank it back on each other. Um, you know, it's all in the writing. I remember reading the episode, the first episode, and I said, you know, and I'm barking at the kids, saying, you know, we're gonna kick their asses so hard they shit themselves. And I, my, me, I'm like, no, that's not that's not it. <laughs> He's, you know, he's better than this now. He's, we, he's past that, but no, he's not, you know, and they kick him this way and then they stretch Ralph that way. Um, and those are, you know, that's the writing. And that's also who Ralph and I are. We, we have our, you know, our personalities and our, uh, you know, who we are that we bring to these roles. And, and, you know, we, we kind of, uh, you know, it's like being a, you know, a, you know, a good dance partner or whatever, you know, good sparring partner. We, we, we know each other's moves. We see what's coming um we feed each other to to take the shot and it's it's a great relationship like that yeah um, yeah. yeah it really is I, I, to be honest sometimes i still can't believe that this show exists because <laughs> i'm still in the nostalgia mode of when it first started and thinking like this movie means a lot to me i was still coming of age when it came out and i was and now we're talking about it uh, after four seasons you've done season five that's in post-production like it's it's almost like a dream and i just think like and all due respect william like we're a similar age i think 27 if I, go, if, if I go down the stairs in the wrong way i do my back out i don't know how on earth you can you're able to pull off the physicality of the role like honestly like episode five you and ralph are going at it and then you both knock each other out and i know this is acting and it's a tv show but surely are there moments where you think wow this is super physical how am i going to get through the day Yes, but not because of the, my limitations physically, but because of the time that we have to do these right. things. You know, in that fight, our seat, our fight in season five, in season five, the big fight at night. If you talk to Ralph about it, we did that. That was a night shoot. We started at seven at night or something, ended at four or five in the morning. It was 40 degrees. Um, oh we were God. barefoot out in these mats and it was so freezing that our feet were freezing. They would have to heat the mats up. And in between takes, we go in the vans and warm up our legs. So, um, you know, thankfully, fortunately, I'm still fit and still uh, limber and I, I don't have any injuries. Um, although I twisted my knee once, uh, filming last season and, um, you have to be careful, but that was more of, um, a, a foot placement issue rather than not being, um, stretched out for it. Um, I was wearing some Vans tennis shoes and I skid across a, a mat in a dojo and those two things don't go well together. So it stopped me and my knee jerk forward. Um, so I had to go and get an MRI and make sure I was okay. And I wasn't about to tear it so I can finish the season, which I was fine. Um, so yeah, you know, it's uh, but you, there's also kind of an adrenaline that kicks in, like you're called to this. And when I'm playing this character, um, I, I live like Johnny, I think like Johnny and I know him real well. So it's, I kind of get into his thick headed mindset and I push through, you know, it hurts. It hurts a little bit more. Um, you know, you could pull some here and there. Um, but it's me and that's, what's great. And the, the karate is, is a character, you know, a lot of times we have the stunt guys come in and did, they'll fill in for this and that. And they're, they're such good martial artists that they look like sometimes like a video game of street fighter or something, these perfect martial artists. And what I like to bring to it is some character and some slop and some, some age and some humor, all the things that I am. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, you, which, which makes it, which it makes it fun to watch. And we're not just watching kind of crisp karate show but it's uh, yeah that it's us that at our age doing it. exactly yeah. it interests me to see something a bit more authentic and a bit more real and realistic but yeah. speaking of like i after the all the tournaments that we've seen in the show so far particularly in season one with miguel and robbie uh, reliving the johnny and daniel saga i can't believe what they came up with for the end of season four two episodes beautifully directed by josh Heald written by the whole team really like th this was a team effort to make it so unbelievable we had like um kenny against robbie and the two girls and um, you know uh, miguel walking away and eagle fang and it, it just was just, it was a lot and it was yeah. so impressive i was so glued to the tv talk me through your thoughts on how this season just kind of exploded it a really it really is really an impressive two episodes yeah, those two episodes are a feature film almost. I mean, it's yeah. it is a the, that way we shoot that in a I guess a two weeks, ten days, um, and it was it was a circus. It was literally a circus. Uh, it was like a stunt camp going on. So you have the guys filming with a fight that's happening, and then in every little pocket around the 
around the auditorium was all the stunt guys working with the new fights, the next fights and getting brushed up. And it was served like that. It was almost like served like fast food, like, you know, just, okay, next, next fast food, fast orders, you know, um, here comes the next guys. And I couldn't believe the martial arts these kids did. Mary Mauser coming out with her size and some of the sticks, the bow staff, um, uh, Gianni came out with, I mean, these kids were d practicing. I mean, all season where we're doing this, we have the, we have the luxury of, training for three months so so by the end of this everybody's at their best and um everybody just took it so seriously and such such uh to heart that um you know and then it was a it was massive it truly was massive it was you looked at it and said it's impossible and you'd walk by and look at josh sitting behind the monitor and john and hayden next to him and you know just holding the whole thing together in their minds and how this is going to cut and how this is going to work and what we could cut here and what we can push here um, and and be unrelenting and not take no and not not compromise in any corner and we're gonna get it and push through and push everybody through you know I mean our days on those sets on, the, on those uh, on those call times were were super early whether we were needed or not we were there wow. five thirty six in the morning and we'd be hanging around all day until it was our number and when it was your number um, you better be ready um, that's wow. for the acting and for the and for the fighting to do something like that I mean we really could have used a month to shoot that. Um, so it was, uh, it was, it was incredible. It's always incredible to watch it because you know, see it back and see how it plays. It's brilliant. And the, and there's, there's such an energy to it. I love how it ends with, with, um, Tori and Sam fighting. I, I loved, I loved Hawk winning, you know, he's one of my favorite characters and Dimitri. Yeah. It's just a really great way to end. And of course the, the season ends with, um, you know, with Daniel at um, Miyagi's gravesite, Chosen arrives, bringing yeah. reinforcements. I have no idea where this show is going in season five. I don't even want to guess because I could not have expected what season four gave me. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm still recovering. Um, it's in the can. So you've done your bit. Are you looking forward to watching the reaction to what season five is going to be? I, I, I've said this since I read season five that it, it's after season one, it's my personal favorite, I think. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I think it's just, it's another level. It's, it's each season of Cobra Kai is its own character in a sense. It's, it's a, it's its own show. Um, this one is this one again, I don't know how, the, how, the, how it's happening, but it's to me even more exciting and more engaging and um, more fun, bigger. And it ends with another launch pad. So um, it's great. I had a blast playing it. I really had a lot of fun with, I loved I love the Johnny in this one. I mean, this is a Johnny without Eagle Fang. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, it's a, it's a, it was a good time. You're I'm gonna... looking forward to it. Um, yeah. William, congrats on a really strong season four. And thank you so much for your time today. Thank you, Robert. Appreciate it, man.